Hello everyone. Happy New Year. How is 2021? That just does not roll off the tongue, does it? How is 2021 starting out for you all? Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a love or, you know, if it's already miserable, I understand. I feel ya. We're in it. We're in it. We're in it. We're in it. I actually, um, I was just joking with my son about the fact that it wasn't, you know, I love word of the day stuff and like Webster's and um, anything that has words in it, I'm always on, right? So I have a word of the day. In fact, I have multiple words of the day that come into my inbox, but I took a break as did the tech guy, you all know, for the holidays and my inbox was flooded. But one of my favorite things, and I'm going to have to find it, I'll find it and I'll share it because I want to give credit to where credit is due. But um, one of the word of the day sites, their whole thing was about phrases that should be banned forever, which is like in these uncertain times, <laughs> just like anything that you can imagine COVID out of an abundance of caution. And I'm not making fun of COVID at all or light of it, but just, I think it's like, we all know we're just, we're living in it now. We're all in the mix. So let's just not say it. Do you feel me on that or not so much? Hello from Canada. <gasps> Happy birthday, Wendy. Yay for a live on your birthday. Yay for your birthday. Hopefully you're doing something fun to celebrate. I'm glad you're here with us. Like that's, that's amazing. That's huge. Um, yeah, I would love to know, are you, are you over the phrases of COVID? I cringe every time we turn on a commercial and it's this like, you know, music about it or the day I tell you, um, Joseph, you like the new logo. That was a Christmas present for me from the tech guy. Isn't that so cute? It's so bookish. And coffee-ish. I don't have coffee. I just, I have my water tonight, but you know, <laughs> it's been pretty, pretty mellow so far. Chad says, yes, Sherry, Sherry, you agree. Cherry. I always, I always get it wrong. Sorry. Unprecedented should be banned. Yes. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. My daughter yells when it's said by anyone, right? Lillian, I know. I mean, like, obviously this is a collective experience, but it's so fascinating to me as someone who loves words, how that piece plays out. Uh, anyway, that's my little montage for the night, I guess. Um, the new normal. Yes, the new normal. That's another one. Absolutely. Over them. Lenora, you're with me too. Okay. Phew. Good. I feel you. Let's just say like, this is our normal. And I think that was kind of, I shared a post yesterday about the fact that many years ago, I gave up the idea of um, setting a New Year's resolution because there's something about a resolution in my mind. And I know that, you know, semantics are important in my head, maybe too much so. It's that whole thing that sometimes our greatest strength is also a weakness, right? So I like, I really latch on to words meaning, word meanings. But um, I don't know, for me, sometimes there's something and I like, if you're a resolution person and that works for you, that's awesome. Aces, I'm not, I, no judgment here. But for me, resolutions, they always kind of like linger with this negative connotation in my head. Cause then it's like, if I don't get it done by, you know, the end of January or something, some crazy goal that I've set unrealistic expectations for myself, then I put all this like blame on myself. So I set intentions and one of my intentions this year, which has been my intention for many years in the past is just being right. We are all this is what we're experiencing now. So let's just be in it together. The irony is this whole idea of our story collaboration began last March because of shutdowns and um, it turned into this beautiful, amazing, organic thing. I'm so excited to talk about what we're gonna do tonight um, because it's gonna be new and different and um, a little scary, but that's good because it pushes all of us out of our comfort zone for sure. Yes. <laughs> You thought the logo was soft serve ice cream. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay, the tech guy is going to try something techy live in the moment. Fonda chooses a word of the year. I saw a few people do that. I love that. I need a word of the year. I got to think of what mine's going to be. I'm going to spend some time thinking about and then I'll share it. <laughs> I thought you were going to turn it into soft serve somehow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Michelle, every newscast here starts with today's new COVID numbers. You know, I really honestly, and the tech guy can attest to this, um, I don't know if this is just a thing that we as creatives experience, but I, I can spin in my head a lot. I've shared that before. Um, I have struggled with anxiety for my entire life. And so I have a lot of tools now in my 40s 
thank goodness, to deal with anxiety. I I do a lot of meditation. I walk. I, I really practice good self care, and I have learned that I cannot um, do the news cycle so much because the minute I do, I just get sucked back in. Um, and it's all real and it's happening. Um, but for me, I just, I play out so many worst case scenarios in my head that I've really tried to balance how much news I ingest into my little tender soul because it's not so good for me. Um, yeah. So, um, on that note, what's that? Oh, I know, Lillian, I'm so grateful too, because I feel like this community has just been so amazing. Not only the connection that I have with all of you, but the connections you've made with each other. And so if there's just like a tiny little glimmer of um, me being part of that, I'm I'm so grateful. So grateful. Um, So tonight we are going to do something brand new. For those of you who maybe haven't been along for the ride so far, in 2020, we did multiple story collaborations together as kind of fun spin-offs of both my Big Shop series and my Sloan Craft series. But because you all are so amazing, and I know many of you are writers, and it doesn't matter if you're not writing yourself either. I know that everyone who's bookish and loves books is creative because you're readers. And you just totally blew it up last year with ideas, suggestions, plot twists. I, I never was at a loss in terms of what to do. The, the biggest challenge for me in terms of taking your ideas is every time I would go and read through all of the suggestions and try to compile things, I, I didn't know how to whittle them down because you just had so many fantastic suggestions. And I think this is because a lot of you read so many mysteries. So you know how it works. You know the insider secrets. So yeah. Okay, we're going to send Fonda some loves. I'm a front healthcare worker in one of our local hospitals. I'm so very fatigued, both physically and mentally. Oh, Fonda, you're from Medford. You're my Rogue Valley girl. Um, I'm going to totally cry if, if we go here. But yeah, thank you a million times. Can everyone send Fonda like as many hearts and thumbs up and as love as we can muster? Because... That's part of the reason that I don't watch the news because I can't even imagine. And I have so many friends here um, and family members who are in healthcare. And the fact that you're showing up to work every day is just phenomenal to me. And I can't thank you enough. And I don't know how it ends. I mean, that's part of um, wanting to ban, I think, all of the words and the phrases from the dictionary because this is not a plot that we, we know how it ends. We can't finish this story. Um, thank you, Anna, for sending her, um, love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I hope this just is a tiny bit of distraction for you. Um, I see Wendy Bond is on here too. Wendy and I worked together, uh, at the Alzheimer's Association for many, many years. Uh, Wendy's an amazing volunteer for the Alzheimer's Association and an advocate if we're getting into healthcare there. Um, yeah, I think, I think part of the gift of this group is that it's that, right? And that's why I read, and I'm sure it's why many of you read. I'm not going to be able to pull it together, so i got to take a drink. No, I'm glad. Thank you, Fonda. Um, one of the gifts of writing for me, and certainly of reading, is just that, that we get to create these very fictional happy endings. And we have this like very, um, like boxed in idea of what's going to happen and how it's going to end. And so I think, um, latching onto that has been so helpful for my own sense of well being. So yeah, I know. Thank you to all of our healthcare writer Fonda and a million others like, whew. Um, okay. So on that note, what we're going to do this time is you all are fully going to write this with me. Up to now, we have plotted together and then I have taken it and I have created sort of my own world that lives in my head with Bake Shop and Sloan. But I wanted to do something new. So this time when we do this collaboration together, you are actually going to write the pages. And you and I, whoever gets picked or whoever is willing to put yourself out there each week, I will work with you on pages. So like, we'll have a little process back and forth together. Um, that's going to be fun tonight. We're going to do all of the story plotting together 
And then over the course of the next week or so, like we've done before, I will put all of the ideas out for votes. So that part of the process is going to be the same. I will also write an introduction to kind of help, you know, like set the tone and center us in the story and what we're going to write together. And then I will ask for volunteers each week. So not this week. So think in your head like, ooh, do I want to try to write a page or two? Like, I know you all can do it because we did our one night holiday live together and that was incredible. Like we had more ideas than I could even keep up with. <laughs> the tech guy and I were both just like frantic, frantic, frantic. So my idea is that after I share the first kind of intro to the story, I will put out a call for volunteers and you in no way, shape or form like, please do not feel pressure about this. This is literally just everything about it is meant to provide some distraction and fun for me and for you. So there is zero pressure, but anyone who wants to add to the pages will um, get an opportunity. And so I'll just pick people randomly each week. You'll go off and you'll write a page or two, whatever you feel comfortable. If you want to write four pages, that's fine. If you want to write five, I mean, I think we'll probably limit it to like five or six, just because then every time I read it, it's a lot to read on a broadcast. We don't want to have like a 25 page entry because that'll be like an hour and a half of just me reading, which you'll all be like, stop already. They probably want that yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, you might want that, but I won't be able to keep my mouth working for that long. Um, and the other thing about this is this, like the pages that I wrote, in our previous iterations, you've all read them, or maybe you haven't read them. If you're new, you can go read them. They're all in the group and are they on the website too? I can't remember, but if they're not on the website, they will be. Um, but this is about fun and putting creative energy out in the world because I feel like more than anything right now, we need more creative energy out in the world. And so do not feel like if you write pages, that I am in any way, shape, or form going to be critiquing your work, that I'm going to be giving you feedback. I am just going to be happy to share them and to read them, okay? So this is not like, you know, your high school English class where I'm going to go through with a red editing pen and bloody your work. No. Um, and to even call it work is not fair. Um, to bloody your suggestions and your ideas. And that's why even if you're someone who just loves to read and this process is fun for you. I want you to participate too. Like this is just meant for us literally, literally, uh, to write a story together in the truest sense of collaboration. I feel like, you know, it started with a whim of an idea and it's taken on a life of its own. And now I'm going to next level it and like bring you all in with me. Okay. So, um, yes, in terms of anything, like if they're a little minor, grammatical errors or spelling, like, yes, I will clean that up. But this is not meant to be like, I'm going to provide you with structural feedback on your writing or something like that. Okay. Yes. All right. So does that make sense? That's the plan anyway. You know, and of course be sound oh, and of course there will be sound effects. Yes. The tech guy will add his sound effects to whatever pages you send me each week, which will be great. Um, and then for anyone who doesn't want to do the writing part, that's absolutely fine. Like I said, you can still come along because each week, hopefully there will be cliffhangers and questions and we'll keep doing that building together as we go. That's my plan. We'll see. Again, it could be a total train wreck, but I don't know. That's part of the fun. <laughs> so tonight, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk us through seven questions because unlike before where we were doing spinoffs of my series, we're going to build a total world together. So it might take more like two weeks to get started. We'll see how it feels tonight um, and we'll go from there. All right. So are you ready for your first question? Oh, I should say with these, I'm going to post these in the group as well. And then we're going to do polls and voting, but I would love to just get a conversation started tonight about how it's going to go. Okay. So your first question is, let's talk about where our mystery should be set. Start thinking setting, and this could be anything. And you can put this in the comments. Now, this could be an actual place in terms of a state, a region, some other country in the world. 
This could be more general, like we could have our mystery set at a ski lodge or on the beach. Um, so I would love to start thinking what your ideas are for places. Yes, the tech you're, guy's you're talking going, to me. You're going to uh, take the choices for the polls are going to come to your comments. Oh, right. yes. My, sorry, I should have said that. Did I not say that right? I don't think so. My choices from whatever you are all putting in the comments. Right? Oh, I'm already seeing London. Um, yeah, you have me at London. Who's watching Bridgerton right now? Um, okay, Alaska. Ooh, Alaska is good too. Um, I'm taking, I will take suggestions tonight and put them in polls. So apologies to anyone who might see this after the fact, since we're building a world together, I thought it'd be really fun to do that live tonight. And then everyone will get to vote on whatever I pull out from tonight. Washington, D.C., a theme park in the summer. Oh, a theme park. <laughs> yeah, you can keep commenting. Thank you. The tech guy is keeping me on task tonight. Um, we will share this again on the page, and I will probably leave it open for like 24 hours or so. Is that good? Yeah, you'll, you'll pull the answer at the end of the day after yeah. end of the day. After end of day tomorrow, Dublin. Oh, Colonial Williamsburg, Diana. I love it. On the Death Star. <laughs> Lynn, come on. You're killing the tech guy. That's awesome. Friday Harbor snowed in a hotel. That's always good. Um, Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Come on. Yes. A small British village. Murder at Disney World. I see a lot of ideas with a theme park. You know, no one's done, to my knowledge, a theme park mystery. So... Any of you theme park fans out there who uh, are potentially working on a mystery, there you go. Theme park in the 70s, yeah, a cabin in the Smokies, a beach along the Great Lakes, yes, a roller coaster, uh, Medford, Oregon. <laughs> I love it, Heller. Too, too, too close, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I know, every suggestion, that's the fun thing too. You know, we all get to travel vicariously through the pages of books. That's one of the reasons that I read. I just like breeze through my reads. Japan, ooh, that would be fun. A cruise ship, Venice. I love it. So one of the things to think about for those of you who are gonna participate in writing the pages is one of the elements of a cozy is setting. And oftentimes they tend to take place in a small town or village, but you can take a big city and take a little chunk, a neighborhood, or a borough within a city and turn it into a village. So there's no rule there. There's no hard, fast rule about like, oh no, we can't set it in London. Of course we can set it in London, why not? Um, we're just gonna probably take a little tiny part of London. Wendy wants to know, does the tech guy have a name? Nope, he sure doesn't, <laughs> no. You know, it's so funny because I've tried from the start of writing to give my husband and my son a little bit of anonymity. I mean, come on, I am no Jennifer Garner or superstar, but when you're writing professionally, I put myself out in the world in a different way that they didn't necessarily say that they wanted to do. They both are awesome. And if you physically come to a book event, you'll probably meet both of them because they're usually my crew. His name is Mr. His name is you do what I want. No, not at all. Um, but I, um, I've, I've not done a lot of sharing of their names. Just they've, it's funny cause we've never actually had a like hard, fast conversation about it, but, um, it's just one of those things that subtly in my head, like when I started going out on book tour, I would say my husband and son and not share their name. My son was a lot younger at the time that I first started writing professionally too. So I think maybe in the back of my head, like the mom and me was feeling more protective, but then it just became a thing on the live. So now he sort of loves this tech guy. I think, so I'm gonna start a new series of lives on Thursdays that we're gonna talk about at the end. Um, but I think, and they're gonna be called Ellie's Faves. Um, I think the tech guy should come on as one of my faves. So we'll have to see if he's, if he's willing to do it. I don't know. <laughs> Amsterdam, okay. All right, so good. I feel like we have, so many ideas um, in terms of this. I don't think I've read anything in a, about an abandoned theme park. Maybe someone decided to reopen one and they discover something during construction. Toy, I love that. What a great idea. What was the name of that crazy 
um, park in, in New Jersey. Well, somebody on it is probably from there, but Action Park. Action right? Park in New Jersey. Have you seen that? Do was it a documentary that we watched about it? Oh my gosh, they had like no rules at people all and died. people died and now it's abandoned. Oh, that we could take a dark turn if you all want to go dark there. I like it. Okay, good. <laughs> Sedona. Oh, okay. Whoa. I'm going to have a hard time. So what I'll do is we we already have a plethora of ideas. You can keep them coming, but I will um I'll pull I'll try to pull some different regions. What I think is interesting is I feel like aside from a theme park and I saw like a mountain cabin and a few other things come through. It, I feel like the consensus, and this is why I wanted to do it live too, is that um, there's almost like a tendency to want to set it somewhere physical versus something more generic, um, which is good. Oh, you're a Lego world builder. Oh, you can think of some exciting ways to kill people with Lego. Michelle, I love it. We loved the Lego show. We're big Lego fans in our house last year that I'm going to blank on. Do you remember the name of the Lego show where they, it was like a, this like a competition where they all, it was on NBC. I think Will Arnett was the host. And then there's a great documentary about toy making that involves Lego too. Anyway, um, what I will do is I'll try to pull, cause it seems like, you know, we've got a bunch of regions, we've got some UK stuff going on, some Japan. So I will try to pull a variety of regions. To vote on too. And then also master Lego builders. Masters. Lego masters. Yes. Thank you, Ashley. Okay. Good job. Um, okay. The, the, <laughs> the documentary that we watched is called Class Action Park. Oh, it's good. If you need a documentary, you'll be like, who did I, actually, what I would love to know in the comments is, did anyone actually go to Action Park? Do you know about Action Park? if you're on the East Coast, because it blew my little West Coast mind. That's all I have to say. All right, moving on to number two. Ta -da! What season is it? Obviously, it's winter right now. This one's a little bit easier because, you know, we have four seasons. But in this seasonal theme, you could think out of the box a little bit too. So if it's winter, is it and we're setting it at a ski village. I'm not, I'm not tied to a ski village. I'm just using that because that's the example in my head that's generic, okay? So don't worry. Um, if it's winter and it's at a ski village, is it a specific event or festival or something like that? You know, maybe it's that the super shredders are in town to do their snowboarding tricks or something like that. So you don't have to fully invest in a specific season, but you can too. There's an episode of Psych kind of like that where they, oh yes, that was a great episode. We love Psych. We're big psychos in our house. We went to the Psych office when we were up in BC. Left Coast Crime was in um, Vancouver like three or four years ago. Um, and we went, we're all super Psych fans in our house and we went and found Henry's house, the office, what else? I can't remember. Everything that's down there was amazing. Okay, I'm seeing some springs, summer Olympics, snowstorm is always a good one. Deer hunting in winter, fall or winter. Depends on location, Heidi. Heidi, you do raise a good point. It might depend on the location. So some of this, because we're doing it live, that could, um, that could impact your decision later. Late summer, early fall, summer vacation. Yeah, Joseph agrees, um, unless we want to do something off season. Summer and spring in a theme park, uh, Tina, that just makes me think like my cheeks get red anyway, but um, you know, you'd be like all sweaty and there could be an element of that. Uh -huh. I love it. Abandoned theme park in October. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay abominable snowman festival <laughs> oh i can see the murderer breaking out of the snowman coming after you very good i love it okay moving on to question number three who is our sleuth this is a big one we're world building guys so you know it's next level i'm telling you we're leveling up just like you know in ready player one or whatever um Oh, Ray says a hurricane. Oh, that could be good, especially if, if we if you all vote 
theme park. Mm, okay, so many ideas. I got to focus. Who is our sleuth? Who would you all like a sleuth to be? Now, um, because we might take a couple weeks, like I said at the beginning, to kind of feel out our story development, I think in this, it can be a totally broad character. And then maybe we start to whittle down some of those details. And in fact, in the back of my head, I've been thinking like, maybe there'll be multiple questions about a sleuth after we come up with kind of a global idea about our sleuth. So, you know, for this, we're talking like, is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a, is it a late teenager? Is it a duo? Um, and then what's their profession would be tied to this potentially. A nerdy tech guy, <laughs> a vineyard owner, I like it. Uh, a guy, antiques dealer, yes. Ooh, I think you're all feeling the male energy. I see a lot of guys, that's good. Um, Andy, oh, I'm editing book 14 right now and <sighs> that little Andy, he's so sweet and his lattes are so delicious. In fact, as I was editing, I was wishing I could just pop into tort and go get it. An Andy latte, um, an accountant running a law for firm, a guy who builds ice castles. Ooh. Oh, running from, from the law firm. That's a totally different way. A mime. <laughs> A mime. Woo. Mel, you're really going to make us work. Somebody's going to have to like, <laughs> I like it. A librarian, an ordinary person. Uh-huh. A young mom working at a pancake house. You guys are so creative. A guy named Henry, aka Hank the Hunk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Anyone who's new in town. A group of friends could be fun, Joseph. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, good, good. Um, keep thinking on this because like I said, I'm gonna leave it open for a little while to keep going with that. Now, um, the one caveat for a cozy mystery, we are gonna go cozy even if it's at an abandoned warehouse or um, theme park or something, we won't gruesome it up too much. Don't worry because I'm a scaredy cat. But um, the thing about cozies is that the sleuth is usually amateur. So the one thing that I will toss out is just if you say like, you know, the police chief or, you know, a crime scene investigator or something like that, then it's probably not going to be a good match for a cozy because they're going to know something um, or know so much. So we need somebody who should not necessarily be invited on a crime scene for that. Um, very good. A, an AC repair man. Yeah. Especially if it's in the summer. Mm, that's good. <laughs> Twin sisters. Ooh, that could be tricky too. I like it. <laughs> okay. Moving on to question number four, who is the victim? So this is tricky too, because I know we don't know all of the details yet, but I want you to be thinking about characteristics of a victim. You know, is it an innocent victim? Is it someone who's in the wrong place at the wrong time? Or is it just a true villain um, who we all are going to love to hate and be kind of secretly glad that they ended up being the body? I mean, that's kind of the theme of the cozy. So um, I want someone who's vocally challenged like a deaf person, uh huh. but they are the star of the story. Ooh. I got to give it a minute because I should have put these questions separately because now I'm realizing, oh, we might get it wrong in terms of the victim versus, okay, no, I can see some coming in. All right, we're good. Um, innocent victims are no fun. I know. <laughs> can we just eliminate Richard Lord? I would love to. Someone who looks like the sleuth. Oh, Anna Louise, that's a clever idea. I like it. A villain. Okay. A local amateur musician. Mm -hmm. Hmm, very good. A realtor showing a house. That's good, Marty. That's like plenty of opportunity there for sure. Um, a nasty coworker. Yes, that's the best part of writing mysteries. I often feel like, you know, anyone who I see that is up to no good in the community, I can just pen away on the page. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the other thing about the cozy is, we're getting to suspend some belief. So you can kind of play up the idea of a really villainous victim too. That's good. <laughs> Someone who didn't see it coming. That's good, Marcy. Uh-huh. 
The wife dies on a ride and the husband is blamed. Tina's already all in for this theme park. I like it. A mystery writer. Oh, yes. Bring it on. That's perfect. Sister of the sleuth. Mm -hmm. Oh, I kind of like it. You guys could turn the tables. Let's have it be a mystery writer. No, I'm trying not to put my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A hated developer who's builded, building townhouses. Gasp. That's just <sighs> no good, Sarah. I'm with you. They would have to go. No. <laughs> a competitor. Terry, that's always good. Yes. So whoever our sleuth ends up being, it could be a competitor. I knew you all were good at this. This is fantastic. How are we going to choose? There's so much goodness. Okay. Keep those coming. And then we're going to move on to question number five, which is what's the murder weapon? Oh, <laughs> the tech guy lost me momentarily. What is the murder weapon? Mm -hmm. This is always a good one. And I know, I know you're going to think it's hard because we don't know yet, but that's part of the fun. We might be able to work in some crazy twists with a murder weapon, depending on where our mystery ends up being set. I love it. Traveling salesman who has mysterious ties coming into town. A romantic rival. Lego bricks. Yes, Michelle. Lego bricks. That's definitely going on the list. Um, poison. A scarf. I happen to be wearing a scarf tonight. Are we going with the mystery writer theme? Who said that? No. <laughs> a candlestick holder. That's a classic. Classic Agatha Christie. I like it. Shady owners of a theme park. A falling sandcastle on the beach, a Lego sculpture. Oh my gosh, you guys are so good. It's winter icicles. So yes, Heather, you've read a lot of mysteries. Exactly. Um, a ride that crashes, something that melts away. Mm -hmm. A sharpened needle, um, knitting needle. Yes, that's so great too. That's straight out of the pages of Miss Marple where she just kind of like be doing her own thing and then stab you. I know she doesn't actually really kill people in the books, but I feel like... Mm. She might after all those murders, right? <laughs> um, a lightsaber. <laughs> You've got the tech guy intrigued. A wrench is thrown into a roller coaster hit by a big chunk of cheese. <laughs> I love it. Death by cheese. Mm -hmm. Sabotage of a ride, Lorraine. Okay, good. I'm, I'm feeling what you guys are putting out there. Cider. Mm. Makes me glad I don't have cider right now. That's all I have to say. Hanging from a signs of uh, the town's welcome sign. Ooh, that's gruesome. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, we're moving on to question number six, which is what's on the menu? And here's the thing that I have to tell you. I know that many of you read cozies like crazy. I know that some of you are working on your first mystery, but most of Cozy Mysteries, not all of them, have some addition. And because we're doing this together, all of mine are food-based because, as you all know, food is my love language. And so we have to have food. We're going to have to write about food a little bit. And we're going to have to have food and delicious drinks to consume while we build this story together over the next few months. So I want you to start thinking food. This can be favorite family recipes that you love. And we'll, we'll dive into the specifics of all of that. This part of our world building is just the initial stages. We'll, we'll go deeper, don't worry. But um, think about some of the favorite things that you would love to write about or read about. <laughs> That's the thing for me. I love both. When I'm writing, I get totally immersed in the food. And when I'm reading, then I have to go find whatever I have just read about. Gourmet pizza. Mm, ooh, a peach festival, sausage on a stick, a hurricane drink. Yeah. Casseroles, any kind of casserole, hot cocoa, deep fried anything. Yes. <laughs> um, coffee and baked goods. You cannot go wrong. I mean, with coffee and baked goods, uh, foot long corn dog, mm -hmm. batter bread, cookies, fair food. Uh -huh. I'm sensing a theme among some of you. Hmm. Stews and soups, craft beer, apple cider, or donuts. Okay, Marty sees somebody else. I think it was Jeanette thinks that the cider is going to be poison. So you two can get together. I'm going to totally crack up if you all decide to um, start forming. We can turn this into like survivor of story collaborations. You can start forming alliances. And <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. But I would crack me up if you're like, okay, 
Hmm, I saw that Marty is also a cider fan. Who else on here was going all in with fair food? Okay. Food fusion truck. Yeah. I love it. Deep fried pickles, cornbread muffins, pancakes. Come on. It's not dinner time yet. In fact, we're going to have dinner after the live. So now I'm starving. Oh, I do want to say, I meant to say this at the beginning, but um, I, I heard from a lot of you that on the East, no, on the West Coast, that uh, five o'clock is a little tight to get to the lives. So what I decided to do is Tuesday, we will do lives at 5.30 moving forward. So when we read pages and do this moving forward for the next weeks to come, it's gonna be at 5.30. And my lives on Thursday will be at five to accommodate those of you who might be on the East Coast and getting ready for bed. So we're kind of like, I'm gonna do two just to meet in the middle a little bit. I heard from a lot of you that Friday mornings are just tough with work, which I totally understand. So that's what I'm gonna do Thursday nights. Okay, deep fried bacon with maple syrup. Mmm, -hmm. delicious tater tots. Oof, come on, food truck, yes. Fried Oreos, wow. I need to go to fairs more often. These are great. And then fruit smoothies to balance it out. Well done, Diana. Yeah, that's good. We gotta, we gotta get some health food mixed in. Um, okay, <laughs> this one's a big one. Are you ready? Title ideas. This one might take some extra time too because you might wanna wait and see how things shake out. But what I do want you to be thinking about are the punnier, the better. That is like the key to the cozy mystery. If you go to the mystery section of a bookstore, either in person or online, you know right away when you're in the cozy section because you start to see titles like Chilled to the Cone and A Batter of Life or Death. And um, you're probably knowing when you see that title that you're not reading something that's going to be filled with a lot of gore and violence. I could be wrong, but um, think puns. So the punnier, the better with this one. And um, I will give you some bonus time on this one because I know, of course, that we need some of those earlier questions answered in order to finalize maybe the perfect title. But um if you if you have a great idea that you've been like holding on forever that you know it just has to be on there share it now um show me the murder that's good my husband dies reading the title of your library books right i know that's good shoo me the murder oh <laughs> the bacon did it bread are off dead <laughs> my fair murder Ooh, these are good see i knew that you would all have some already up in your sleeve i like it Wiener schnitzel and spatzel. <laughs> Mall madness murder. <laughs> the wheel of misfortune for a theme park, Heidi. That's great. <laughs> I've been tossing around the naked noodle, the name of a restaurant and a story I'm working on. Oh, Shonda, that's a great name. You definitely need to write that story. I want to read about the naked noodle. Tell me when it's done. <laughs> Class action park. <laughs> yes, they might get mad at us. I don't know. There could be some copyright stuff with that, but hey, we're just we'll just tell them. No, this is for fun. We're doing this for fun. It's like our our creative outlet outlet each week. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good sense of what we're gonna do over the next few weeks. I will put all of these ideas, I will spend, so you have at least another full day to think about them and that will let anyone else in the group who wasn't able to participate tonight come back and add potentially other ideas. And then, yeah, and maybe we'll do a new post with the seven questions. Would that be easier? Yeah, in the new group. We'll take these into account, a ticket to die. <laughs> a fair to remember, Jeanette, that's good. Um, Classy action park. <laughs> Six flags of danger. Um, anyway, so we'll do, I'll post about it tomorrow and we'll work that part out. Um, but then you'll have an opportunity to vote on your favorite, to form alliances, to, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, campaign for your idea. And then next week on our live, I will have kind of an initial sketch or it might be that we decide like, oh no, let's spend a little bit more time diving a little deeper because lots of you, I know probably not all of you, but lots of you were already familiar with the characters from my series. So you had kind of that world. So it might be that we spend the next couple of weeks doing a little bit more of this. And then we 
do pages like in two weeks or something. We'll, we'll play that out based on how everybody feels. And maybe I'll pose that question to the group too, just to get a sense of it. Lego builders remorse. <laughs> I love it. Affair to dis member <laughs> Marita. <laughs> I like it. It's dark. <laughs> it's dark and delicious. Um, okay. Well, I'm super excited because you brought it tonight. I'm impressed. I have no idea. Six flags of danger. I just saw that one. Um, I have no idea how we're going to, um, choose on this because it's so many great stories, but here's the thing. If this works out, because it's always an experiment, if this works out, we can do it again. So, you know, maybe your favorite theme doesn't win the votes this time, then in the spring, if we decide to do another one, then your idea could come to fruition then. Or maybe this will inspire someone to go out and write one of these ideas too. I'm all down with that. Um, okay, so continue to put those amazing creative plotting brains to work. And I'll be eager to see uh, how it all shakes out in the next few days. Um, in terms of what's coming up next, let's see. So I'm going to start my new Thursday Live this week. I'm going to share with you some of my New Year New Reads. And I will absolutely want to hear reading suggestions for you from you. Um, so think all things bookish. And we'll have a chat about what I'm reading, what's in my stack, what I'm excited about. And I want to hear what you're reading, what you're excited about, all those good things. Then um, next Tuesday, we'll do Story Collab Part 2. However that shakes out, we'll, we'll see. And then um, on Thursdays, I have some special guests who are going to be joining me. And I do want to say the last Thursday of the month, we're going to do... A book club because I have received so many messages from a lot of you who've already finished Chilled to the Cone. And because Chilled to the Cone is kind of a turning point in the series, there's so much to talk about. Oh, hey, there it is. Thanks, tech guy. Um, and obviously, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it, especially those of you who might be new to the series and just starting out. You can't know what happens in book 12 at this stage of the game. So the last Thursday of the month is going to be a Chill to the Cone book club. So we're going to talk about it. It's going to have so many spoilers. So if you, a grade of sap, <laughs> I like it. Um, book club, yay. Um, if you have not read it, read it before the end of the month, because then you're going to be able, we're going to talk about all the things that happened and what's coming next and we'll, we'll break it down, but it will have spoilers. And I promise that before it takes place, I will make sure that everywhere says that. Um, but that's just, um, my little nugget to those of you who have been messaging me. Thank you so much. Um, it's so sweet to hear, um, your thoughts about the book and jewels and all that good stuff. On that note, I just learned from my, publisher that if you haven't read the series and you're wanting to get started, Meet Your Baker is on sale on Kindle and Nook and Kobo, any digital app for $2.99 until January 10th. So if you want to start the series, go grab a digital copy right now. And I think that wraps us up for the night. You're waiting for it to come in the mail, Penny. I know the mail has been so spotty this year. My one of um, our son's last Christmas presents just arrived last night um, from his grandmother who sent it like, you know, weeks before Christmas. So hopefully you'll you'll get it before the end of the month. Um, OK, uh, I, yeah, I think that I think that does it. I'm going to be super excited to do this with you. I know already from tonight, I was, I was slightly nervous because, you know, I took a break from live. So I always feel like, Oh, we're back to live. I'm so excited to see everybody. But what if, what if people are like, no, I hate this idea, but clearly you all have a lot of ideas for murder running around in those brains, just like me. So I'm super, super excited to do this. I can't wait to just see like who our sleuth is and where this murder is going to take place and then actually get to write it with you all. I'm super excited. So yay. Um, on that note, I hope everyone has a lovely evening. 
All that food talk has me ready for my uh, cheese tortellini and spinach soup that's waiting for us upstairs. And um, I'll see you all hopefully on Thursday. In the meantime, happy plotting. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah.